Okay. Let's take a look at how the internet's communication works from an application standpoint. Applications on the internet follow a very popular paradigm, which is the client-server paradigm, which basically says that there is a server servicing clients. It provides some service. The service could be a web service. The service could be email service. So let's take a look at some of the popular services that the internet provides. So here's some applications. Here's email, which all of you use. It uses an application layer protocol, which is called SMTP, and the underlying protocol is TCP, which is a reliable protocol that we talked about. Then we have remote access, whether it's Telnet or uh, SSH. These use TCP. Then we have web, the web, the web, which is the World Wide Web, uses a HTTP transfer protocol, which is a reliable TCP. F file transfer uses TCP. Streaming media can be done either using UDP or TCP. The more popular version is to use UDP because we want to get speed and not so much reliability. Because if you lose a few frames, the user cannot tell the difference. And the same thing is true with internet telephony, whether we're using something like Skype or some chat version, audio chat, it can use both TCP or UDP. So what is what does the client-server paradigm really involve? So let's take a look at what what the steps that a client does and what a step what the steps that a server does in implementing a client-server system. So typically what will happen is the server is running first and the server is somewhere centrally located, let's say, and the server creates, the first step it does is creates a, a connection socket. Remember, we said that network programming for us is socket programming. So applications are going to create sockets to communicate with each other. And so it creates a connection socket. It then waits for connections, waits for clients at the connection socket. So a socket, as we said, is basically a IP address port and all the information encapsulated from an application standpoint. So let's say this runs at port X, Y, Z, whatever that number is. So all the app clients, wherever they may be, uh, client here, client A, uh, client B, and so on, if they want to communicate with this server, have to know where the server runs, the server's port. And usually this is a well-published number. So the server, let's assume that it's running at, a, at some host dot network dot some organization. So the client says, I know it's running at that machine and it's accessible at that port. So now a client creates its own socket. So the first step, that the client does is creates a client socket. And the act of creating the client socket is to tell the system that I want to talk to, I want to connect to host dot network dot org at port XYZ. So these are the parameters you use to create the client socket. The act of creating the client socket sends a request to this waiting server. The waiting server says, oh, I'm seeing a request from a client, so let me accept it. So it accepts. So every time it accepts, it accepts each client request at a separate socket called a server socket. So, and then if it's a, if it's a server that can support multiple clients, he'll create a thread to serve 
this client. So thread to serve A. And now if there is a request from a different client, so this client, let's say, creates his own client socket, his communication will also go to the, to the main thread. And on behalf of this guy, there's going to be another thread. This is the thread to serve B. And similarly, if this client C makes a request, there will be another thread on behalf of to serve B. And the idea is that we can, we can have multiple clients access and the main thread, all it does is it's delegating the task of serving to a thread so that it can continuously wait for new requests to come in. So once the communication is established, then maybe the client itself goes through some sort of a sequence of steps. It sends, now that it has connected, it's going to send a request for service. The request is sent to the to the thread on the server socket and the response if the response comes and then it's going to read the response read response which is response comes back and it may do this any number of times depending upon the system and in our case we will send a weather request to a weather server it sends a response you process it and then you repeat this process periodically to get a refreshed information about the weather server and all of these basically follow the same technique so this thread is the same logic but it's duplicated several times and you have some context for understanding what a thread is we've already seen what the foreground thread and a background thread R, which is basically your interrupt service routine. It's the same idea, except it's a little more involved in a real operating system because we have to manage a lot of resources. And they loop. Hmm. So this is the classic paradigm by which the internet communication works in general. So in the next video, we're going to show you each of these steps as they're implemented on your launch pad, connecting through your CC3100 out to the uh, openweathermap.org server.